Okay, January 18th, 2019, we're at Mom and Dad's Packard Oaks Farm, and they're going to talk about appendicitis. One of the problems uh, that we had uh, in Alaska is that we didn't have good medical help. And we knew that when we accepted Nome, uh, there was only two other doctors there, and my office was in the hospital along with their offices. They, both of them, were uh, medical missionaries from the Methodist Church because the hospital was owned and run by the Methodist Church. Uh, anyway, we, um, I had 14 Eskimo villages that I was responsible for. And I would get there however I could. And uh, so sometimes we would go by bush plane, and sometimes by uh, skidoo, uh, snow traveler, or sometimes by dog team. According to what was available and however I dickered, I did it, worked it out ourselves. You didn't have a military person above me. In fact, I only wore the uniform if one of them came in, and that was only maybe once or twice per year they would come in to check up and, and see how it is, and they would just use it as a vacation to come and see no. <laughs> and um, anyway, we, uh, I, I, it was I, went to a village. I had an Eskimo assistant that would go with me, and I would bring my equipment. It was in about four or five boxes, and one of them was a, a very heavy cast iron uh, dental chair, but it was old and, and heavy. Anyway, we, we would take these by bush plane, and I, we got into this first village, was called Shishmaref. I mean, not Shishmaref, it was Elam. Mm -hmm. And Elam was uh, not too many miles from Nome. I don't know how many, but it was uh, not very far by, by air. And so I, um, uh, it was about a, a, a day after I arrived, and uh, it was, uh, I went on a Saturday and did some work, and then on that Sunday I knew that something was wrong. When I was back in, in dental school, I had appendix that, that hurt me, and I knew what it was and went in, and they put me on antibiotics. Well, it cleared up, so I didn't do anything with it, which I should have. <laughs> I should have gone ahead and had them removed, but being there in Nome, that's... Uh... Well, anyway, I knew what, what I was coming down with on uh, <coughs> Sunday night, and it was uh, bad. Uh, I remember going into the classroom and kneeling beside the blackboard, making very serious promises to the Lord because the pain was getting so heavy. And, uh, and then all of a sudden... Uh, golly, I think it was that night that I knew that it broke. I went into shock. And I, being in the medical profession, I knew what was happening. And I got all his medical books out. And I've been running them because the, the school teachers had medical books there. And, uh, and I even considered cutting on myself to try to uh, take the appendix out. And I know I wouldn't have ever made it. I... We considered everything. We tried this. Each school, the teacher has a, a, a shortwave radio system, and we got stations in Australia and Russia and stuff like that, but we couldn't get anything in Nome. We were uh, trying. It was almost like you could get them from one direction, but nothing, even close by in, in another direction. I thought of getting on the trail with the dog team, you know, the, taking me. It would have been about two or three days on the trail, and I would have died on the trail. It would have never made it. Anyway, uh, making a serious matter of prayer. Mom don't know nothing was going on. Uh, she was back home trusting that everything was okay. Uh, anyway, all of a sudden, a plane came overhead, circled, and landed, and I just could not believe it because the mail wasn't scheduled for another day, the next day. It's every third, three times a week, and we were uh, off uh, already. And, uh, and the, plus, there a, was a major storm going on. The uh, snow was blowing horizontal. And uh, anyway, he landed, 
uh, about a oh, quarter of a mile, maybe a half a mile at the most, out on the ice where it's smooth landing, not on the, each village had an airstrip, but they were always too rough uh, for them, and so they would land on the ice where it's smoother landing. Well, as soon as they landed, the whole village just showed up on his plane and says, uh, Dr. Packard is up there, he's dying, you've got to, and he had no idea I was there, and he told me his story on the way back to Nome, that he had this Eskimo mother, she had, I think, six children. She was trying to get him back, get back home to them, because she had major operation there in Nome, and the weather was bad. The weather was bad, and the weather was bad. And she would keep contacting this pilot uh, at night at any time. <laughs> he says, "Can't we go now? Can't we go now?" And uh, so anyway, on, on this Monday morning, um, they uh, he said that the uh, the sky broke just a teeny bit. And I thought, I can get off, you know. And he said, I was the only small plane that got off and uh, that morning. But I just rushed over and got her and got to the plane and off we went. I had no idea that uh, you were down there. And I know, uh, Todd, that that was a total answer to the prayers that I was making, making some very serious promises to the Lord of how I was going to serve him if he wanted me to. Anyway, uh, we landed in Nome, got back, and uh, they rushed me to the hospital there, and both doctors shook their head and says, he, it's already burst, and it's everywhere inside. There's, we, can't, we can't handle it. The big plane, the four-engine plane, happened to be on the ground, ready to take off at the airport, and they quickly said, get him on that plane and take him to Anchorage. And so by this time, she was with me. We rushed down to the airplane and got on that plane. Didn't you go with me? I don't and think I did. I don't think I did. You had two kids at home. I had to go. <laughs> Plus a baby, I think, with, Tom, uh, mm -hmm. with uh, Daphne. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we flew all the way to Anchorage. And, uh, and by the time I, we arrived in Anchorage, I was in big trouble again because I was swelling, mm -hmm. getting bigger and bigger. And they had the ambulance there at the airport put me in the ambulance and just rushed right straight to the hospital. It just so happened there was a member of the church who had, uh, from uh, Seattle. Seattle, they scrubbed in with, with the doctor there. And he said, I have never seen anything like this in my whole life. He says, when they cut you down, they, they the, the cut is big. They just didn't care about what they were cutting. They just cut and get in. And he says, when they opened you up, it flowed all over the operating table and the floor, all over. It was so bad in there. Well, anyway, they went ahead and, and did the operation. He, he said afterwards, he said, I think you, you had maybe 30 minutes left in your life. You, we just barely made it uh, to, to do it. And so they put in a, a permanent drain and I was there for two weeks, uh, in draining and things. I remember that time was when we saw the uh, the, uh, the moose, the oh. moose, the moose out on the the grass, uh, the hospital there, out uh, right in front, and right in front. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So anyway, um, and then they uh, they took me back to Nome, and I was able to finish Thank my. You finish my mission there, but uh, they, uh, I think that's when I took the picture of the ice flows. Um, let's go ahead. And